now allowed us to rediscover the very things that the rabbis knew thousands of years ago. And so it's a very fascinating study. But let me just give you one example to give you a flavor of this. This is uh, Genesis chapter 1 in Hebrew. Now, I want to remind you that Hebrew goes from right to left. Also, the word Torah in Hebrew is spelled with four letters. A ta, which is roughly equivalent to our T, an O, a resh, a he, um, four letters. If you go to the first how in the book of Genesis, and uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet that happens, and you count 49 letters, you come to a vav, you count 49 more letters, and you come to a resh, which is sort of like our R, and you count 49 more letters, you come to a he. So that is four, those four letters spelled Torah. Now I need to remind you that all languages flow towards Jerusalem. Did you know that? All nations east of Jerusalem go from right to left. All nations west of Jerusalem go from left to right. All languages flow towards Jerusalem. I don't know what you're going to do with that piece of information. <laughs> But I think it's interesting. Now, you can follow this without knowing Hebrew, probably, but you say, now, why 49? Was the square of seven? Okay, that's fine. That's not, that, not too surprising. But just a coincidence, of course. Or is it? Now, you could argue, well, that's just an accident of the frequency of letters and so forth. It's kind of rare, but interesting. Except what happens is when you go to the book of Exodus, you go to the first tau, count 49 letters, you get a vav. 49 letters, you get a resh. 49 letters, and you get a hey. Same thing happens. What's the probability of that? Whatever the first probability is, it's that squared. <laughs> okay? So it's very unlikely. Genesis, Exodus, you go to Leviticus, and it doesn't happen. And when it doesn't, you just almost feel a sigh of relief. Huh? But when you go to Numbers, the same thing happens backwards. You take the first hey, the first resh, the first vav, the first tau, you get Torah spelled backwards. Now that's weird. What's weird. If nothing else, I don't know how they found this out. They must have had time on their hands. You know. <laughs> they didn't have computers. You, know, this was... you go to Deuteronomy, you have essentially the same equivalent thing happens. And now you're puzzled because you've got it forward, forward, backward, backward. You can't resist going back to Leviticus and looking at Leviticus more closely. We have 49 and 7 squared letter sequences. Torah, Torah, forward in Genesis, Exodus, uh, backwards in Numbers and Deuteronomy. Well, if you look at Leviticus, you discover that every seventh letter spells the unpronounceable name of God. Often rendered Jehovah or Yahweh, uh, re-expressed re, uh, uh, as Adonai among the Hebrews. They won't pronounce that name. They'll use Lord, the word Lord instead. Well, now we stand back from all of this. We have the, the name of God, and we suddenly realize that the Torah always points to the name of Jehovah. Now, what's the chance of that happening by accident? And by the way, if you've tried to contrive something like this and still maintain logic in the text, that's a challenge. This is a very non-trivial thing to design if you set out to design it that way. So uh, many of us tend to regard these kinds of things in general as fingerprints of the Holy Spirit.